Welcome back. Children's wearables and connected toys are an easy target for cyber criminals. That warning coming from a new report from McAfee, which also finds that only 23% of parents are taking security precautions with these devices. Joining us right now is the CEO of digital software platform C3 IoT, Tom Siebel. Tom, it's great to see you. Good morning. Congratulations on another billion dollar company here, C C3. We want to talk about that. But let's get your take first on this, uh, this statistic about wearable. Does this surprise you? What, what do you think parents need to be doing in terms of these wearables that can track everybody and criminals know that? We're seeing a massive proliferation of computers across all value chains. Toys, travel transportation, aerospace, the financial system, you know, tens of billions of computers in the internet and behind the firewall. And we're seeing exponential growth that's basically dramatically increasing the surface area available for cyber attack, cyber crime, cyber terror, and cyber war. So these are very, very critical problems. And I would say this is, a, this is an important use case that they're talking about in this release, but a relatively insignificant use case. It's insignificant use, in other words, it's not being used? No, well, criminals? I would say that I think people are less interested in monitoring a, a criminal in monitoring a toddler in a crib sure. than they might be in bringing down the U.S grid infrastructure. You bring out down the U.S. grid infrastructure, uh, power grid, 9 out of 10 of the people in the United States die. So that, it, I'd be, this is a critical, critical problem that we're not. Yeah, not even that, but corporations. So I look at, if people think of the cloud as a big boon for computing, they need to think about the future of Four Horsemen, which I think includes AI, virtual reality, Internet of Things, which you focus on in distributed ledgers. Uh, the, I think the situation that people aren't focused on is the amount of data that goes into this to run, to make it work. And I think uh, corporations don't understand the security aspect where they're vulnerable, that it could go through to all their systems. How do you play into that? ecosystem well we're probably part of the problem so we're enabling we're enabling corporations to design develop and deploy massive scale Internet of Things and AI applications to in the areas of say precision medicine to improve health or discrete manufacturing to lower the cost of products that being said <clears throat> the surface area available for tap for attack is growing exponentially and I think the industry okay with Silicon Valley and the rest of the computer industry and the software industry and the and the United States government and other governments are not doing enough to protect these systems. These systems are highly vulnerable to attack. And we might be worried about toys, but how about the banking infrastructure? How about the power infrastructure? How about the, the defense infrastructure? If those are penetrated, I mean, it's the end of the world. Is that a what software kind of, hardware issue? What, I mean, what, what kind of response are you seeing from companies? Tell us about C3, IoT, your new company, which is not so new anymore. But in terms of what businesses are doing and what they need in terms of AI, are you seeing a big response? Well, this is a quarter of a trillion dollar software market in 2023. So this is the, I've been in, this is my fourth decade in the information technology business, Maria. We've been talking a long time. We have. And, uh, and, and this is the fastest growing and the largest market we've seen. And I'd say when we get into cust our customers, customers like NG, 3M, CAT, John Deere, uh, they're highly, highly concerned about security of data, privacy of data. Uh, you know, they, they have chief security officers and processes that are very robust. That being said, these vulnerabilities, and also here in New York, uh, uh, Con Ed and New York Power Authority, we, we provide the systems for, for, for these organizations. But these... I mean, there are bad out actors out there, there are rogue nations out there, and these systems are vulnerable to attack. I mean, they can be brought down. And I would say at the level of industry, at the level of my industry, and in, in both hardware and software, and government, we are not doing enough to address the, 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 these issues. These are, these are you know, life-threatening civil as western civilization threatening so is problems. it an unlimited spend companies know them in terms of the response the perception uh, i think the 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 I, there is not unlimited spend okay there is i would say the spend is insignificant compared to the side of the th a threat both at the national level and in the private sector let me ask you, Tom, too, just from another perspective. Obviously, today's we're awaiting the jobs report, which will come out at 8.30. There's a lot of talk about artificial intelligence and how that technology is changing the job market. Is it eliminating jobs? Is it even creating jobs? Is it helping people do jobs 
do their jobs better. Would love to get your take on, on how it's impacting the job market. AI changes everything about the way the companies operate, the way they design products, the way they deliver products, the way they deliver services, the way they deliver medical services. So it changes everything. It creates many jobs, like for data scientists and whatnot. Yeah. At the same time, like every technological revolution, the steam engine, the industrial revolution, the cotton gin, okay, this is going to be disruptive, and there will be jobs that will be eliminated, okay, and we need to start thinking about that and doing something about that. What do we do? Well, we need to start giving some thought. We need to start just talking about it seriously. The Congress needs to deal with this. We need to stop this, you know, bipartisan, like, you know, silly bickering going down in Washington, D.C. and get something done. Uh, this has to do with education, it has to do with training, it has to do with national policy. But what are the taxi drivers in New York City going to do when we have autonomous vehicles? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, the idea that we're going to retrain these people to be data scientists is crazy. Right. Okay, I mean, we... we, <laughs> we That's a good point. This is an important national issue and we need to deal now, with it. I will say one thing, though. You, you see this coming from a decade away. Like, you can see the, the automation and you still get in a taxi, to, to use your example, and it is filthy. It, the seat belts don't work. It's disgusting, and you have the taxi owners doing nothing. And about you wonder it. why so there are disruptors, get, right? So <laughs> if they get disrupted out of business, you know what? It's their fault. Uh, <clears throat> these changes are <laughs> happening. They're not stoppable. But the fact is, there will be adverse consequences as it relates to jobs that we need to deal with. There will be social consequences that we deal. The benefits will be substantial. We will be healthier. We will be happier. We will live longer. Mm. Products will, will, will be provided cheaper. That being said, jobs will change and some people will not keep up with those changes. It goes back to education. We need to make sure that people are trained in the right skills to actually get the jobs and thrive in this, in this new normal. Tom, it's good to see you. Great to see you. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining us. Congratulations to you, Tom Siebel, joining us there.